So we're here today at the beautiful Bitterwell Leets near Bristol. It's run by Paul Isaacs, who's actually my Thatcher's teammate. And today we're going to be talking through how important ground meat is at this time of year for silverfish and the three different ways that I like to feed it to get the most out of your swim and hopefully and catch some quality silverfish like this. So we're doing a bit of silverfish fishing. It is November, we're looking to catch a bit of everything. So the mix that I've chose today is Thatcher's Dark and a bit of Sweet Skimmer. So we are trying to catch some skimmers, so the Thatcher's Dark adds the bit of fish meal into it. We all know the skimmers love fish meal. But the Sweet Skimmer just adds that little bit of a biscuity sort of mix and that sweet smell. So hopefully we'll catch some roach and some other fish over it as well. So it's sort of my go-to mix on venues that are sort of see a lot of pellet through the summer, my go-to mix this time of year is Thatcher's and Sweet Skimmer. So I'm just going to talk through three ways that I sort of use my ground bait and how I introduce it into the peg this time of year, just to get the best out of your swim. So the first one is mixing it just normal, like everyone does, just loose ground bait. It's not, not, not over wet and it's not dry. It's just that nice consistency that you can form a ball if you want to squeeze a ball. But the two sort of ways that I feed it is just loose. Now loose is a very good way of putting a sort of bigger area, which means sort of putting it into your pot, sand castle it. it. It makes a nice sort of big area of loose ground bait. And that's a good way of catching like all sorts of fish. So skimmers, roach, you can loose feed over the top. It just, it's a good sort of way to get bites on hard days. The other way to feed it is sort of forming a ball like that. You know, you can feed a, a big volume of bait by putting balls in like that. And I'd probably put loose particles in that, sort of casters, dead maggots. Not live baits, because they sort of break up the ball, but sort of inert baits. So your casters, your dead maggots, your dead pinkies, and introduce quite a big volume of bait that way, with some particles in it. That's another good way of catching fish this time of year, especially skimmers. But that's quite a positive approach, that is. So the, the second sort of way I'd feed my, feed my mix, especially this time of year, now, like I said, it is November, we're gonna start going into winter, is having a real slopped up mix. So a bit like that. It looks horrible, it's like baby's poo, but trust me, that creates lovely cloud in the water and seems to drag a lot of smaller fish in. So if it's a really, really rock hard day and you're struggling for bites, slopping your mix up like that and adding, introducing little balls into your swim on a regular basis, just makes a massive cloud for the water, puts particles through the, through the layers of the water, and that does get you bites on hard days. So that's a real good way of getting bites, especially when it comes into winter. And then the third sort of way, which is like my favorite way to catch sort of quality fish, you know, quality roach, quality perch, big skimmers is the old uh, the old worm bomb so basically you chop your worms up like that put them into a pot and then add just enough ground bait to hold it all together so it creates like a sort of a sloppy ball like like you just said with the other the other way but you can form it into a nice little ball like that which goes down to the bottom doesn't break up straight away, it's more of like a putty consistency. So it doesn't break up straight away, but it pinpoints sort of quality fish in an area over the top of that ball. And because it's in that sort of putty consistency, they've actually got to work, work to eat the bait. They actually got to sort of get in and sort of break the ball up to get to the worms. 
so it's not like sort of opening up and letting the fish get to that bait easy like you'd like the loose ground bait and the balls it'll break up and fish can get to those particles quite easy and sort of graze over it where this is sort of a, a way of pinpointing them into an area so that's the three ways i like to feed like to feed my ground bait especially on venues like this where there's lots of skimmers lots of roach lots of perch and you're looking to catch all sorts of sizes of fish so i'll just start fishing now and i'll talk you through the different ways of how i'm going to feed it and why i'm feeding it that way so we're just going to start the session now i'll talk you through the rigs in a moment but just talk to you how i started my swim so i decided to fish six meters at an angle it's just at the bottom of a slope and then 13 meters so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kick off my swim with half a pot of loose ground bait on that short line and i'm going to try and fish that worm bomb to concentrate fish into an area my longer line i've been a bit more positive on i put a full pot of loose ground bait in but i've also put like a ping pong sized ball of that worm bomb in now i'm going to see how the session goes it might not be that i, I fish that worm bomb every single drop hopefully if the quality fish are there and the skimmers i will be putting a little bit in but it might be that it's a harder day and i might have to loose feed some maggots over it and just fish over that loose ground baits so i'm going to go over i've just got a little worm head on the hook and i'm going to go over start fishing and just see how it how it develops if i start getting pestered by sort of smaller fish i might put a little bit of a worm bomber over it then to see if i can concentrate a few better fish a few quality fish into the swim but we'll start the session on this six meter line over that pot of loose ground bait like i said i have fished a feather 13 meter line which is a little bit more positive I, I, out there i fed a full pot of loose but i have put, a, put like a ping pong sized ball of worm over the top of it so i fed like an area with loose ground bait and then just put a ping pong sized ball of worm over the top just to sort of concentrate them into the middle of that uh, that area i've left that alone i'm going to start on this this six meter line and see how it goes just had a little indication here then I haven't started loose feeding anything yet because I want to sort of see how my swim reacts. The ground bait's a great, great way of pulling fish into your swim. So you don't have to loose start loose feeding straight away. Just let the fish sort of see how they react to that ground bait. Now that's a smaller fish there, you know. A nice nice size roach it's a beautiful size roach sort of three or four ounce so i'm not gonna still not gonna put that worm bomb in yet just because that was a nice size fish be catching on that first drop and i don't want to don't want to jump the gun and ruin my swim so i'm just going to go back in exactly the same again the worm head on yuck let's see if there are any better fish there don't want to try and push things too early Just lay my rig in, hold this sort of foot out of the water, and then lower the last foot. Over the top of that ground bait. Hopefully those better fish will come in 
over that loose ground bait but if they don't like I said I'll just alter my alter my feed in a little bit see if I can drag a few quality fish in the fish sort of tell you how how the session's gonna go so it's another small roach So I'm already thinking, even though it's only two, two casts in, I'm already thinking that fish are coming over that loose ground bait, but there's no real quality there yet. Those, those sort of bigger skimmers and quality fish have not come over it really confidently yet. So I'm going to have another quick, quick go. You never want to jump the gun too early but if I catch a little indication then if I catch a roach or a small fish this time gonna feed just a little worm bomb through that pot just to see if I can drag a few more quality fish in yeah it's another roach that is I'm already thinking now that there's fish there's fish in that area over that loose ground bait it could be big, there could be quality fish over that loose ground as well, but they're not just not finding the bait. So I'm already thinking now that I'll start feeding a little, little worm bomb like that. Just a little ball of putty. I'll put that directly over, over where I'm fishing now. And I'll lower my worm head directly over the top of it, just to see if it concentrates a few of the fish in that area so just drop that little little worm bomb in like I said just hold hold the rig out a little bit and then just lower it down just let your rig straighten out gives the fish a chance to see the bait as well they like to watch it when it's falling just get that directly over that worm bomb and hopefully we can catch a few, a few better fish over there. So there we are, we've just had a, waited a little bit longer for a bite. So you can just see The effect of what that worm bomb's done. There's obviously fish of all sizes grazing over that loose ground bait, which is brilliant on a hard day because it means you catch lots and lots of fish, and lots of bites. And but with it being so mild, you know that little worm bomb we just put in now. You know, and lowering your rig directly over it. has resulted in a better quality fish so we're gonna just prove a point here now with our worm bomb that there's ways of catching quality fish even though even though you're fishing for every, your initial feed is for everything that swims but there's ways of concentrating your bait to make sure you catch those better fish in that area so I'm going to leave that alone now, we've just proved a little bit of a point there by feeding loose ground bait and showing you the effects of a worm bomb over the top. Now we're just going to go on our long line now and have a little look out there and show you a different way of feeding with say balls of ground bait with loose particles and we'll see what happens with that.
So just before I ship out on this long line now, I'm just going to run you through the rigs we're using on both lines. They're both pretty much identical, apart from the elastics. So, got an 011 main line to an 09 Acupower hook length and a size 18 SFL hook. I use the SFL hook because I'm mainly targeting sort of skimmers and quality fish. If I was fishing for sort of roach and all that, I'd probably use a different hook, but the SFL is perfect for this type of fishing. Just got a simple two droppers and a bulk. So it's a little bit little bit strung out on the bulk. I like to have a little bit of space between my bulk. I don't like it all bulked together. And then two number 10 droppers. The float is a Chianti. It's just my all time favorite float for, for silverfish fishing. Whether it be roach through the water, skimmers on a deck like this, it's just a fantastic float for it. I've got a single slip five elastic for the short line. And then on the longer line, like I said, they're identical, identical rigs. But on the longer line, I've got a single six slip. Both elastics, I feel, are the very, very best for silverfish fishing. I don't think they're going to be beaten, to be honest. So there's my two rigs I'm using. They're almost identical. The depths vary between about six to eight inches on both lines. So they're almost identical. The six elastic out for longer, because I'm expecting to catch a few more bigger fish out there. So that's why I put a six out there, and then the five for short. So we're going to go out now, have a little look over that, that ground that I put in, and hopefully catch a few fish. So we've just got one on that long line, but it's become quite apparent from like the first time I've gone out there that that volume of bait they put in, it's very silty out there and there seems to be a lot of fish in the peg blowing and sort of making a nuisance of themselves. And it's just making me think that when the bottom's as silty as is on, out there, you just don't want to be having them digging around like that. It's just it's very hard to get fish, fish on the hook or in the mouth. So I'm already thinking now that I might sort of feed another swim, not far away from that, that line, but with like little balls of of ground bait with a few particles in so like sort of your feed like little balls with some some maggots or casters in but like very little little bait so it's like fishing for one or two fish at a time rather than a big volume of bait and getting lots of fish in your swim I think this fish is foul hooked. Which is the second one I foul hooked over that line now. Like I said, there's lots of fizzing out there and lots of lime bites and so I'm already already thinking now I'm gonna change that change that swim because there's no point getting lots of fish in your swim if you can't catch them. Especially if you can't get them in the mouth, you just just end up ruining your your day, so Good fish of about 12 ounce, 12 ounce to a pound. It's a lovely fish, but like I said, it is it is foul locked. So I'm gonna have one more look on that line, and if I don't get one in the mouth, I might miss a few more bites. I'm then gonna change that swim. But uh, I'll have one more look, 
and then I'll show you that I'll be re replumbing the line and showing you a different way of feeding in that silty water to try and catch those fish. So that line out there, it is very silty and that big area of loose ground with that I fed is turned into a bit of a mess. The fish are digging around on a, in a large area and it's very hard to get fish on the hook that are in the mouth. So what I've done is I've gone to a different, pe different area of that swim away from that loose ground bait and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish little, little balls little balls like that with some casters and some loose offerings in but those small balls are going to limit the amount of digging around and limit the amount of fish that are digging in that silt in the peg so it's going to limit the foul hookers and also get more fish on the hook so the way I've kicked that swim off is totally different to the, to the way I kicked the other one off I've literally fed a ping pong sized ball with a few casters and a few dead maggots in. So it's literally nothing. And I'm going to feed a little tiny ball through a pot every cast after I hook a fish. So I'm going to go out now. I fed that little initial ball and it's my first cast now with feeding a little ball and fishing over the top of it. So I'm going to go out, have a go, see if that sort of solves the issue of having these fish mooching around in the silt. You can't avoid fish fizzing when the bottom's silty, but you can sort of limit it. So that's what I'm trying to do now, is limit the amount of fish that's coming into my swim. And try and get those fish that are coming into the swim on the hook. So just fed that little ball here then. Like I said, the initial initial feed was a ping pong size size ball. So it's not a lot of bait. It'll be very sort of concentrated in an area. So I've lined up with a far bank marker. So I know that my rig's directly over that bait. And if the fish do dig around there. There we are fish straight away there. So the difference in those two lines already is light and day. So in that first line I fed a full pot of loose ground bait and a, and, and a sort of ping pong size ball of the worm putty. And Adam fizzing all over the shop, he was having lime bites, foul up two fish. Did catch a few in the mouth, but see? Did catch a few in the mouth. But that difference, now we're feeding a, a little bit of bait with some loose offerings in, but real concentrating into an area it's got me a bite straight away. So I'm going to carry on fishing now. And we'll see how we get on later. So we've had a lovely day here today at Bitterwell Lakes near Bristol. Using Thatchers and Sweet Skimmer. Fishing the three different mixes. Sloppy Worm, the Sloppy Worm Bombs. Sloppy Ground Bait and Ground Bait Loose Anna's Bowls. Like I said earlier, the long line was really silty, really hard to get them in the mouth. But that shorter line, where it's a little bit harder bottom, has been really good. So we've had some lovely, lovely skimmers. Like that. It's a beautiful fishery. And hopefully you pick up some tips. Mm -hmm.